Hey guys, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and I'm going to give you 20 tips that you can use in Affinity Photo. Many of these tips are geared toward people who are coming from Photoshop, so let's get started. I used to be a Photoshop user, and I liked the dark mode. So here's how you change Affinity to dark mode. You go to Affinity, Preferences, and then you click this box up here, and you go to User Interface. And here it says dark and light, just switch to dark. Okay, in this tip, I'm going to show you how to use the color picker on the upper right color panel. If you don't see this color panel, make sure you go up to View, then Studio, and make sure the color panel right here is checked, and that'll bring it up. Now, this is the color picker. If you want to use a color picker to find something, say I drag this here and I would like it to be one of these purples. You look at the little square in the center and it becomes purple, but it didn't change the color. The reason it didn't change the color, and I don't understand why it works this way, is it's here on the side and you have to click it to bring that color in. Then you can click on the brush and then make sure you have that color picked and paint right there. So I will undo that. The really great thing about the color picker here is I'm going to move my screen. Not only can this color picker pick something here, but it can pick it anywhere outside the screen. So if I like this particular blue, I can do that and click it there. And now I have that blue. Hey guys, quick tip number three is the history panel. I really love the way this panel works. If you don't see the panel anywhere on your screen, you go to view, studio and look for history and click that and here's the history panel and it has a slider which is really fantastic so let me show you I will create first a new layer choose a color and I'll pick the paintbrush make sure the foreground color is with the paintbrush and start painting on the new layer just like that and then maybe I will create some kind of a shape these two arrows and we'll make that shape we'll do like this and we could change that color of that shape to another color we'll move this around so we'll go to the pick tool we pick that layer and we move this on top and then maybe pick the next layer and we move this below so over here you see the different things that we've done and you could click them like this that's the way it works in Photoshop but look how nice this works. If I use the slider, I can go anywhere at any point and I can just slide back and forth and then choose that spot. So if you've done a lot of things, the slider is the easiest way to work. Hey guys, our next tip is putting the palettes on the lower left toolbar. In Photoshop, right here on the lower left under the toolbar, the color palettes that are here on the right we're also down here on the left and I got used to using it that way because it gives you more room if you want to change the palette on the right and not be color you still have your colors here so here's how we're going to do it you go into view customize tools in customize tools it allows you to move the toolbar any way you want all your little icons you can add an icon subtract an icon you can customize it to your liking and then someone informed me of a trick. You go down here where it says number of columns and you click on two and then you close. And there you go. Now you have your palettes on the left side and on the right side. In this tip, I'll show you how to get the polygon tool. I've seen many people online complain that there is no polygon tool. So here's how you get the polygon tool. When you click the lasso tool right up top, there are different things and one of them is polygon. So there you go. Simple as that. When you click, you can just do like you did before in Photoshop. In this quick tip, I'll show you how to use the effects to give you a gradient overlay. So here I have a photograph. So the first thing you do is make sure the layer is selected. Go down to effects. Click on gradient overlay. And what will happen is it will be completely covered. You won't see anything except the black and white gradient. Well, all you have to do here in the blend mode is change it from normal 
to overlay. In this gradient mode, you, there are many things you can do. In this particular picture, it didn't make sense to go from left to right because it's a landscape. So the first thing I'll do is I'll slide this up here. No, that doesn't work because now my sky is too bright. So let's go the opposite way. And I like that. So here we go. So now if you really want to see what it really looks like, the white shows more and the dark shows less. So let's go back to overlay. That's not bad. But what if you wanted to warm this picture up? Well, then you can click on the gradient and pick on the dark color. And let's say we choose, instead of a black, we're going to choose a little bit of a navy. Let's go really in the navy area. And then we hit on the white one, and we'll choose maybe an orange of some sort to warm, give it a little yellow, and or a little orangey maybe to warm it up. That's not too terrible. Once again, I'm doing this very quickly. In future videos, I will show you detailed work on how to get the photograph to look great. Still, I'm not liking it. So what I could do, I can add another color here by double clicking, but rather than that, I, I would like more orange. So if we slide the orange this way, look at that. Now it looks much better. It's much brighter. And if I really wanted to, I can change this orange even anytime. I can just change that maybe to more of a yellow. And let's close and look at before and after. So you open up the effects. That's before and that's after. So we've really warmed it up. Next, we're going to have a quick look at shapes. So right here is the shape tool. So first, let's open a brand new file. We'll say new. I'm going to use web, put 800 by 800 and say OK. So we have now a blank page right here. And we go right to the toolbar, click on shapes and press down. And there are all kinds of shapes. So they're very deceiving. You think that you can only do very few things. Like if I take a triangle tool, I can create a triangle. Now up on the top, I can tell that triangle I want it to be blue. And right here where it says stroke, it's on none. I could say I want a stroke and I could tell it how many points to make that stroke. And I can give it a different stroke color if I want to. See, there we go. And let's make it bigger so you could see it. And I could put it behind or in front. It's up to you how you want to do it. So I'm going to leave it in front. Now, every single shape has things on top you can do with it. For example, this says top point 50%. If I click that down, I can move it to any position I want, just like that. Now let's take another shape just to show you. Let's press down a heart shape. Heart shape. I would like, of course, my heart should be more red. And I think I'm going to get rid of the stroke altogether. So let's say no stroke. Now on top, once again, if you look here, this one has a spread where you can bring it in. Or out. So you can change that thing any, any way you want. Of course, you can stretch it to any kind of size. But the nice thing about it is the shape alone can be changed just by using this. One more time now, we'll go to let's pick a cog tool. And this cog tool, let's make this cog tool. I'm just going to make it a gray. We'll get rid of the heart tool. I'm hitting delete. We'll get rid of the triangle. So now I have the, the cog tool. Now this gives you more information. For example, the inner radius, I can make small or large, just like that. The tooth size, I could change. The whole radius, I can go like that. I can make it very large. And the notch size, it's pretty amazing. So there's so many things you can do. Here, even curves. You want to curve it? You want to curve it out. You just made almost a flower. If you take that and you take the inner, the whole radius and make it smaller. And then let's see, I don't know how to do it. We'll do this one. 
we'll play. There you go. So just like that, you created a little daisy. In this tip, I'll show you how to convert something to curves. And in this instance, we'll use shapes. So I'm going into the shape tool and let's create a teardrop. And we'll give it a color just like we did in the last tip. You can look at the top and you can change the curve here. Uh, you can make it go left or right and you can make it bend one way or another. But what if you want to do more than just that? Instead of bending it one way or the other way, what if I wanted to bend them both into the center? Uh, let's see if we can get this into the center like that. What if I wanted to bend both sides in? So then what you do right here is convert to curves. And when you convert to curves, it's no longer a shape. It even shows in the layer that it's now a curve. And once it's a curve, you go down to the toolbar, and if you don't see this node, press down on the pen tool, and then you'll see the node. And the node allows you to do many different things, anything you want with that shape. So if I double click right here, and I double click right here, that means now I added more nodes and I can move them around and I could twist anything. I could really just do just about anything. I can twist this, I could spin it. So it allows you to customize whatever shape you chose. Many people have asked online, how do you copy effects? I wish they would make it easier. I wish they'd say you can just right click here and say copy effects like they do in Photoshop but it can be done in Affinity Photo, and here's how you do it. Let's take this picture, and let's give it an effects. So we go to effects, and in one of the tips earlier, I showed you how to do a gradient overlay. So here what I did was I took a black and white gradient, put it to overlay, and I would darken the sky a little. Once again, this is not a great way to do everything. I'm just trying to give you an example of how to copy effects. This particular photo has the effect with the gradient overlay and I have another photo right here without that effect. So the first thing you do is you go to the first photo, you click on the layer and then you do edit copy and then go to the second photo and say make sure the layer is selected and say edit paste effects and there you have it. Here's a really quick tip for you. As you've noticed in the last few tips that I've given you, you see a ruler showing. The way to get the ruler to show is to go up to View, Show Rulers. Just like that, they're gone. Now I hit Show Rulers. But here's a bonus tip. It's showing pixels on top, and sometimes you really want it to show inches. So here's how you do that. You must go to the toolbar and hit the Zoom tool. And when you hit the Zoom tool, Right here in the units, instead of pixels, you say inches. If you're in Photoshop and you click the D key, everything switches back to black and white. When you're doing masking, everything is black and white. So I'm going to show you how to use the D key to change everything to black and white. You go up to Affinity Photo, you go to Preferences. In Preferences, when you click this box, you look here and you'll see keyboard shortcuts. There are so many keyboard shortcuts, but what we're looking for is miscellaneous, and that's way down here on the bottom. And if you look around, you'll see set fill to black and white. Click in there, put the letter D, and do close. Now when I click the letter D, watch over here, everything is back to black and white. In Affinity Photo, adjustment layers can be masked very easily. So let's try this photo. Here you have a photo where the sky looks pretty good and the grass in the front looks really dark. So we want to brighten up the grass. So let's go down right here below the layers. For this tutorial, let's pick levels. Here we have levels. Now we want to brighten up this bottom. So I'm going to take the white level way up, like very bright. The problem with that is the sky is completely blown out. 
So the way adjustment levels works with masking is all you have to do is have the adjustment level selected and your brushes must be black and white and you choose a soft round brush. Now nothing is happening because the brush is white and white means there is no mask, it's see-through. But if you switch the colors to black, which you can use the X key, now as you start painting, you're taking away the levels that we did. So you just keep painting and painting right over anything you don't want the levels to affect. And here I don't want the levels to affect the sky. So I painted just like that. And you can see the difference if I take away the adjustment and then I bring it back. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to put masks on here and brighten up the sky just like this with levels and masking. Now sometimes you want to fine tune that masking because you can't really tell what's masked and what's not. So up here on top is the quick mask toggle. If you click command and click on the adjustment layer it shows you where the mask is right here. And then go to the quick mask toggle. In Photoshop the quick mask toggle is on your lower part of your toolbar on the left. If I paint in red it's masked out. So here I want to fine tune it. So if I take my left bracket and make my paintbrush smaller, I could see, well, I missed that part right there and a little bit here. And here's some right here. And a little bit here. And maybe I did a little too much, so instead I'll hit my X key and switch to white. But right here I might want to bring back some of these trees. So I'm painting in white and bring back the mask, which means the red is disappearing on the mask. And so now I turn off my quick mask and then hit Command D and I have a much better selection. In this tip, we'll talk about clipping masks. I've created a black background. Now I'm going to put in some text. So I will choose Crash Black and type something. The larger you pull, the larger the type will be. It'll show you what it looks like. And I will type fearless. That's a little bit big, so I'll shrink it down. So here you have type, and here you have a black background. Just for now, I'm going to go to the background and add another layer. And I think I would like to fill that layer in with 10. So let's try that like that. Let's hide the text for now and let's pick a nice brush. We'll go into the brushes and pick something a little bit wild with some texture maybe. Something like this I think would be good. And you take a brush and you make it black. I'm just going to keep, I'm just creating a quick crackle texture just for the heck of it. I'm just tapping. I think that's good enough. Now we'll turn on the text again. Now the way a clipping mask works is right here on your layers palette, everything to the left has its own separate layer. But if you move it to the right under one of the layers, it becomes a clipping mask. And the texture shows through just under the text, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? I could still move that around. I can move that anywhere I want, make the texture fit, just like that, as long as it's behind the letters. In the last tip, I showed you how to do a clipping mask. This time, I'll show you how to do some 3D effects. So if I choose the text layer right here, and then go down to Effects, 3D effect, you can just Decide how much 3D you want, how much you want to soften it. Let's go a little more than that. And how bright you want it to be. You can even give it some lighting. Right now there's lighting here. But if you choose, you can add a second light. And instead put that lighting on the bottom. Now you have two lights. And it gives you a really great effect. Here's an odd thing about Affinity Photo. There are pixel layers and shape layers. When you need to transform a pixel layer or a shape layer, they work differently. 
So first let's create a shape layer. Let's just put a rectangle. Now let's create a brand new layer which is called a pixel layer and I will choose the rectangle marquee tool like that and then I will fill it with the same color. Let me hit command D, deselect or I could have hit deselect right up here. So let's label these. So let's put, this is the shape layer, which is the rectangle. And then this one is the pixel layer. Okay. Make that a little bigger. So when you grab a corner of a shape layer, like the rectangle, you can move it any way you want. I'm going to undo that. But when you grab a corner of a pixel layer, it stays in proportion. I don't understand why it does it differently. They should have done it the same, but this is the way Affinity works. So if you want the shape layer to stay in proportion, you hold down the shift key and then that keeps it in proportion. And if you want the pixel layer to go out of proportion, you hold down the shift key. So it's a simple tip. I don't understand why it works that way, but at least now you know. I was a little confused with copy and paste when I tried this one day, and then I figured it out. If you take a shape, let's say a heart, and just just let's make the heart red, okay? Now let's say I went to the rectangle marquee tool and I wanted to take half of that heart and copy and paste it to a new layer. So I could do command C or edit copy or, and then I could do command paste. And I'm looking on my layers panel and instead of pasting half that heart, Let's deselect this first. Instead of pasting half that heart, it pasted another heart. And this has happened to me on several occasions doing different things, and I didn't understand why my copy and paste was not working correctly. And then I realized what's going on. So let's delete this copy. This is now a shape. It's like a live object. And before you can copy and paste anything separate from that shape, you must rasterize it and turn it into just pixels. So what you can do is you can go over to the layer right here and right click and go down where it says rasterize. Now it says pixel. So it is no longer a shape layer, it is a pixel layer. And once it's a pixel layer, you can just select whatever part of it you want. Then you could say edit, copy, edit, paste. So there you go. So now you know that you need to be in a pixel layer before you can make a selection. In this tip, I'll show you how to use the mesh warp. Let's create some text. So let's go here. Let's say fearless. And now we want to warp that text. You go over here to perspective tool and you press down until you see mesh warp. And once you see mesh warp, a box arrives around it. All you have to do is drag it wherever you want it to go. Let's say you wanted it wider or you wanted to shrink it. Let's say right there. You can also move things different ways and curve them just like you would curves. Now here's some cool things you need to know also. You can add points to this. For example, if I double clicked here, I created a line in the middle, so I could do separate things. So if I also create a line on top, going across now, only the top moves. I could do that, I could do anything like that. And Mesh Warp works with photos, it works with everything. So you can use Mesh Warp to create all kinds of fun things. 
Here's a piece I purchased from a local artist, Marsha Flamont. There are other artists who sometimes want to put their artwork on a website or need to submit it online for a contest. And here's how you would do that. The first thing you need to do is you pull out guidelines from your ruler. So go press on the ruler and drag down to the widest point of the photo and do it again for the top highest point. If you don't see the rulers, rewind this tutorial where I showed you how to get the rulers. Now let's drag the left and right side. These are just guides. They do not print in any way. They're just there to help you out. Okay. Now go to perspective. If you don't see perspective, press down because the mesh tool might be showing, but make sure it says perspective. And in perspective, instead of destination, you click source. And that allows you to drag your points without moving the image. You should first take off the magnet so that there is no snapping while you do this. And I'm bringing the corners close, not exact. If you hold Option and get a close-up of it, you just use your scroll wheel. Control would be on the Mac. And you pull your corners as close as you can to the edge of your image. And when you're done, you hit Apply and then double click on the hand to bring us back. Now the image is stretched out and that's why we put in the guidelines. So now put your snapping on, the magnetic up on top, and now you can just drag until each side snaps. Now it's all in proportion and you can create a JPEG and put it on your website. In this recording, I'll show you how to quickly colorize a photo. So the first thing you do is you have a black and white photo and you create a new layer. So right there, it's a brand new layer. And in that layer, you pick a soft brush and choose a color. I will choose, say, let me see. We will choose for the brush, maybe some kind of blue and I will start painting on this guy's pants. But it doesn't look right the way it is. So all you have to do is go down to the blend mode and change to color. And now you can see that all the features of the black and white show through. I'm hitting the left bracket as I change the size of my brush. So let's paint that. Now it really doesn't matter what colors you use but it's really important to put them on different layers. So I'm going to just put this in right pants and I can change those colors at any time and I'll show you how. So let's just pick another layer and let's say wall. And for that wall, I will choose a red color maybe like that and start painting. Now, once again, make sure you change the blend mode to color. And then I will start painting this wall. And I know it looks bright, but don't worry about it. I'm doing a very quick job right here. So let's try this. Now, if it's too bright, we can go to opacity and bring it down. So when you're done, you can decide to change colors. So let's say we want to change the pant color. So you go into adjustment layer hue and saturation. Now in previous tutorial I showed you about clipping mess. So right now if I do hue and saturation for the pants it's also changing colors elsewhere. We don't want that. We want to only change it for the pants. So drag it here and now the pants could be any color we want. If we like the blue, we want to leave it the blue, we can make it darker. We can turn back the saturation and then let's say with the wall, let's do the wall and we will also do hue and saturation on the wall and it must be clipped to that wall layer and then as you move the, the colors, it changes the colors. And you can also put less saturation there. So that's how you colorize a photo. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe.